the way of pain. They stopped along the way to remember what had happened to Jesus. so much spiritual benefit walking the route to Calvary that they thought of a way to do it at home. They made carvings and pictures of each of the events along the way and placed them in intervals, either outdoors or in a church. Then they could walk the route, stop at each place to do a devotional, and relive the experience. It also made the experience accessible to people who couldn't afford to travel to Jerusalem. Now, you might be wondering why they are called Satan. The word Satan comes from that word that means the same. Every place has a train comes to a stop and stands for a while as a Satan. Except we have built buildings in each of these places, and for us, the building is a Satan. In this case, we are using the word Satan in its original meaning. We are going for a walk. The church at Rome commemorated all the events of Holy Week on Easter Day until the 11th century. At that time, they adopted the widespread custom of observing the events of Palm Sunday, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday on the appropriate days before Easter. In 1342, the Franciscan monks of the Roman Catholic Church were put in authority over the Holy Land. They became familiar with the stations of the cross and decided to promote them as a devotional discipline. The number of stations of the events commemorate that each station varied from place to place. By the 18th century, the number of stations became the base of 14, and the whole devotion was completely standardized in the 19th century. Of the 14 stations, eight are preserved in scripture, Christian literature scripture, and six are preserved in Christian memory. In station one, Pilate found himself in a bind. He had to choose between what was politically expedient and what was right. So he did what was politically and had Jesus crucified. Why, what evil 
has he done? Then he released Barabbas to them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Church, as I sit here before you tonight, I just want to share a few words with you about how people can go along with the crowd. How it doesn't take very much to convince us when things are going wrong that we want to jump on the bandwagon. And that is what happened during this time of Jesus Christ. See, there's a comparison between these four gospels. And what it is is that, see, the four gospels reveal that Jesus underwent six trials. From, mid, from the night to the next morning. You ask yourself the question, why would Jesus have to do, endure six trials in such short time? But that's the way Satan works his tricks on us. What he does is he will get people against you to feel that they will do a trial, but it was a mockery trial. It was a trial of injustice. See, the first three occurred before the religious leaders. And that tells us that today, that we have to be very careful and very prayed up and follow Jesus the Christ in order for us to know who are the true religious leaders that is among us. Then the other three took place against the civil, civil authorities. They had their hands in it as well. Let us know that there is crookedness there as well. But see, we have to remember and know that Jesus sent, God sent his only son, Jesus the Christ, to die on the cross for us. See, it took place in front of Ananias, Caiaphas, and the Sanhedrin. Then the other took place in front of Pilate, Herod, and then Pilate for a second time. So they had to go back to Pilate because see, Pilate didn't want to have anything to do with it. He wanted the people to make a choice. So he finally passed it off unto them. See, these three trials were a mockery of justice. Why were they a mockery? First of all, because what? It took place at the wrong time. And we know when people want to do you wrong, they do it at the wrong time. Huh, they did it at nighttime, in the dark. You know, they don't want anybody to see them. So it took place in the nighttime. It was in the wrong place because it took place in their private homes. We're going to cover this thing up. How often does that happen today? We want to hide what we're doing wrong. And say, without a benefit of counsel, they didn't give Jesus a chance to have a counsel. They don't want the truth to come out. Church, it's time for us to wake up and be aware of what is really going on in the world today. They took place before false witness. See, when you're going, against, uh, going through something, they can bring up false witness against you quickly. Because people always want to be on the crown of the majority. But God is telling us that we must take a stand for righteousness if it costs us our life like it did Jesus the Christ. But we must take that stand for righteousness. Then not on that, but it's accompanied by beating that beat him. They tried to subdue him by beating him. And he was then sentenced to death, contrary to the other. I've been down that road, have many of you been down that road? Just think about what happened in your life. When, as Christians, the Bible tells us that we will go through the same thing that Jesus Christ went through if we are standing for righteousness. Yeah. So church, Jesus, our Lord, was saying he went through all of this just for you and for me. Amen. He went through it for us. Yes. What are you going to go through for him? What have you made up your mind that you're going to do in the, in the name of Jesus the Christ? Yes. Uh, they come here and put your name on a church road and get involved in ministry. But God wants us to do more. He wants us to die for righteousness. He wants us to take a stand whether it be for one or for two. Yes. But he wants us to take that stand yes. for righteousness. Yes. If they crucify you, let them crucify you as it is for righteousness. See, he was convicted by the religious leaders because of his conviction and because of his prediction when he predicted that destruction of the temple. They didn't like that because they thought he was weird. And as Christians, they're going to think we are weird. But I'm here to 